and uh, dived on and getting possession for them by Roland Beckett. Rick Burke is held by Brisbane a few metres into their territory and eventually put to the ground. Greg Hartley, a quick caution on the run. Greg Cox getting the ball away, juggled by Paul Kahn. He's made the bust. He's 10 metres into Brisbane territory in the opening 60 seconds. How do you see it, Keith Barnes? It's extremely difficult to predict the outcome of this game. Uh, Brisbane have shown in their lead-up matches that they can score tries, and they are going to create opportunities out there this evening. Whether they can capitalise on them, they failed to do so in Brisbane last week. But tonight, if they capitalise on those opportunities, I think they're in with a big chance. We know what a great side Penelope are. They're a great attacking side. Players that they have to watch are Paul Kahn, Sorensen, and, of course, Steve Rogers. The key player, to my mind, is uh, Brisbane's hooker, Johnny Lang. If he's able to give them a good share of the ball, and I think he will, Brisbane are in this game with a big chance, but that's the black they have to watch. Kurt Sorensen going very fast up on the inside comes Rick Burke, but the ball to ground and Brisbane... Well, as distinct from Lang Park, Ray. They're a good side. They've proved it by beating three Sydney sides and uh, last uh, week, of course, when they beat the Queensland country, they showed that they can play good football. Alan Mills putting a big one in down to Steve Rogers, who takes it safely and then makes his way up towards the halfway mark where he's tackled by Ross Strudwick. Played on the halfway from Pierce and across to Gardner. He has Greg Mullane with him and Gardner makes the breakthrough one. Then throws the ball by Giet. Looked a fraction forward. Back to Greg Pierce. And he's tackled just outside the 22. Dummy half is Tony Graham. That's Dane Sorensen. Greg Pierce. Khan again. Steve Neen sliding it away to Kurt Sorensen. Inside the 22. Back to Cameron. Cameron's going to score. Cronulla Sutherland draw first blood after two minutes of the 79 Cup final. Gary Cameron scoring the try. And here's the replay. It comes off Kurt Sorensen's pass as he made the bust inside the 22. Steve Neen held his pass up to perfection. Then Kurt Sorensen took the fullback, shouldered him off. Gary Cameron, who has the ability and the habit of running off big, uh, robust forwards, he's always there or thereabouts took the pass and Cameron has scored to give Rogers the easiest of conversion attempts and what a start to the 79 Cup. Well, you certainly couldn't get a better start, could you? And what a great uh, start for De, uh, Kurt Sorensen. We know, of course, that uh, he's going to play a prominent role in this game, and he's emphasised that right from the kickoff. But I was a little bit surprised that it was only Johnny Lang and uh, Ross Stradwick that was out in the wide open spaces That's there, right, Frank. Yes, and, uh, they were, they were they, on their way, weren't they? Their cover defence was bad, so... ...who has competed in the uh, Amco Cup this year. Beckett winning the scrum, Cameron giving it away to Graham in from the blind wing, but taken by Close and taken effectively by Chris. He has a top tackle too, but he's limping he's very limping, heavily. Limping badly. Here's Gardner. Not held. Now he is. Playing the ball back to Greg Cox. Out to Dane Sorensen. There's a big gap between him and Paul Kahn, and Dane Sorensen takes the tackle. He's right in centre field, 12 metres out from the 22. Paul Kahn now. Taking it up, he'll try and turn it round the corner, but nobody there. And players just outside the 22. Brisbane's end of the field, 5-0 in favour of Cronulla Sutherland in the 1979 Amco Cup final. Greg Pierce up the centre. Picked up and dropped by Wayne Carr, and that was a good tackle, legitimate. Out to Steve Rogers. Puts the bomb up. Breeze will hold it there for a second or so. They fly for it, and I do believe Cronulla Sutherland have got possession. Hartley rules the tackle count to restart. It's been dropped on by another Cronulla player. Another six tackles rules Hartley. Played back to Greg Mullane, out to Gary Cameron. He's already scored one. He goes himself, and by G, he must be close. Hartley's over. It's a try. Gary Cameron has scored his second try in the cup. The referee was right, though. So Johnny Lang plays it. Norm Carr making the break for Brisbane. Taken by Greg Cox. Strudwick, Wayne Carr, Des Morris gets it back to, uh, to Strudwick, then to Wayne Carr, on to Bernardin, away to Greg Quinn, a lanky second rower with speed, but taken by Paul Kahn, a few metres out from the 22. Bernardin, Strudwick, again the cross kick bomb, Tony Graham underneath. Oh, the two Cronulla players have clashed, and Graham has it for Cronulla. But they were probably in tight. 10-0 in favour of Cronulla. Cameron, Gardner, lost it and regained. Playing it to Greg Mullane. Tony Graham, 
He did play with St. George. Wayne Carr, the tackler. Greg Cox. Greg Cox has split the Brisbane side. Gives it to Rick Burke. Burke's on a run down the right flank. He'll score. Watching the referee and the touch judge. Cronulla players congratulating Rick Burke. It's a fair try. That was a beautiful dummy by Cox. And th three Queensland forwards swallowed it. So Tony Graham it was who took it to this point. And then it went to this man who held it back through the dummy, then split them. Kurt Sorensen to choose from on the inside. Rick Burke on the outside. And then Burke chased by Norm Carr. And plunging in for the try. Touch judge didn't budge. He had no doubts that uh, it was a try as Cox steps on the head-on inside of close. In the meantime, Backer was giving Burke a start. And this big man who made his first grade grand final debut in 1973 under Tommy Bishop gets it down, but seeing that chalk fly up... Cassette recorder plus 12 Cassie up the cassette radios. And also our thanks to Paul Easterway at Easterway Air Conditioning for the great carrier home air conditioning unit. The ground prizes, of course, they always help to make the final a true gala night. And we thank Electronic Sales and Rentals and Easterway Air Conditioning. Cronulla Sutherland leading by 15 points to nil. Greg Pearce a dummy half. Dane Sorensen. Khan. Kurt Sorensen. Kurt Sorensen around Bernardin, coming at him, Norm Carr, butte tackle by Norm Carr, grassing Kurt Sorensen, and that's not easy to give him a start and catch him. Playing the Sharks for the comp, the cup and the comp. Only one team has done that before, Eastern Suburbs in 1975, as Gary Cameron is wrestled to ground about 10 metres inside the 22. Gardner, away from dummy half, still going. And gets the pass down to Tony Graham, who was always backing him up, chasing his backer. Backer's very fast, and he's rounded Graham up from the left flank, coming across to make the save on the, the right as Becker takes it down 10 metres from Brisbane's line. Great burst made by uh, Chris Gardner. Knock on by Cox, and the scrum will go down. 10 metres out from the quarter. Johnny Lang to take the... Tample place kick. Brown. Up to the 22. Bernardin. And he's heading groundsward. And a penalty to Brisbane against Steve Mean for a dangerous tackle. A tap taken by Lang. Cronulla looked to be inside the 10, but referee Hartley says play on. Well, I thought he was going to get another penalty there. So did I. <laughs> so did I. Norm Carr. And Carr, he's going to score! Yes, Brisbane scoring their first try. Norm Carr scoring the try. Up. Lang taking the place kick. Now it's with McLeod. Put to ground by Khan in 13, Beckett in 12. Given to Bernardin. Taken by Steve Neen. A metre short of the halfway. Greg Quinn is off for Brisbane. He's been replaced by number 17, Wally Lewis. As Wayne Carr gets it through to Norm Carr and then on to Dave Brown. He gets the pass back to John McLeod. Backer goes to Lang. Lang gets a one-hander back to uh, the uh, replacement. As Strudwick comes away with it, but the penalty goes to Cronulla for shepherding. A little bit unfortunate, I thought, there. Steve Rogers. It's got height. It's got length. Looks good. It's a goal. Cronulla 17, Brisbane 5. Insurance have been dealing with uh, Khan right throughout. Yes, right, but it is nice to know that they can do it. Oh, and they yes. did show that in the third quarter. Yes, they did. Kurt Sorensen to play it after Steve Rogers had uh, gained about 40 metres with his uh, kick for line. It was a tremendous line kick. And players just outside the Brisbane 22. Paul Kahn will play it back to Roland Beckett. On the left is Pierce, now Kurt Sorensen. And Steve Rogers inside the 22. Taking it 10 metres out from the line. Greg Pierce. He's got Kurt Sorensen on the inside. That's him now with the ball. Number eight. 
Last tackle for Cronulla. Greg Cox, dummy half. Steve Rogers. Greg, uh, Gary Cameron stepping away from a high tackle. He might score. I think he's over. The referee Greg Hartley says a fair try. That's his third. Every um, gamble, don't you? Full time siren coming up. Paul Kahn to play it. We're in the last few seconds of the sixth year of the Amco Cup. Steve Rogers. Repeating that Robert Laurie won the Volvo 242 GT Sports Sedan as the winner of the Golden Try for 79. Greg Purcell should be the last man tackled with the ball in the Cup of 79. He is. It's all over. And Cronulla Sutherland have taken out their first Amco Cup and by far their biggest trophy since joining the Rugby League in 1967. Cronulla, 22 defeating Brisbane 5 and following this break we'll be back with the 79 champions for the presentation of the cup and medallions and I'll be giving you the man of the match voting leading to the announcement of the 1979 Amco Cup